Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Well, the holidays have come and gone, and we've counted down the 12 days of Bowmas. And I've gotten a lot of really good feedback from you guys that have enjoyed my series, looking at 12 different uh, locality boas over the 12 days of Bowmas. I've also gotten quite a few requests on other boas I should add to the list, which unfortunately didn't make it. So I thought I would extend these, uh, this series a little bit and do a few bonus episodes showing you a few bonus locality boas, even though the holidays have officially ended. Plus, I've really enjoyed wearing this sweet red Christmas sweater over the last two weeks making these videos, and it's probably more use than I've gotten out of it for the previous 20 years since I've owned the sweater, so another reason to continue for a few more. So today's bonus Bohemus episode, I'm going to focus on a, another really cool dwarf locality boa. This is called the Cocker Key Boa, and this is an animal that hails from a small island off of the coast of Belize. And they're pretty similar to the crawl key boas. Uh, in fact, I almost didn't get cocker key boas because I had my crawl key boas. I was happy with them. I thought that the cocker keys were just a little too similar. And you know, I'd rather get another type of locality boa that's a little bit more different. But it, as so happened, I had a really good buddy who unfortunately was getting out of boas. And he had this really nice pair that needed a home. So I ended up with this pair of uh, cocker key boas. And I'm actually really glad that I got them since they are actually quite a bit different in you know some subtle ways compared to the crawl key boas. But like the crawl key boas, they hail from a small island off of the coast of Belize. And you know, at some point in the distant past, some of the ancestors of, that were mainland Belize boas somehow made it to the island. The uh, lack of food uh, on the island added evolutionary pressure for these animals to evolve to a smaller size. So this is a full grown male. This guy is about four feet long. This is, he's actually a 2016 born baby. So he's about five and a half years old. He won't get uh, much bigger than this, if, you know, if bigger at all. Um, this guy was produced in 2016 by Chris Wolf. And superficially, they're similar to the crawl key. They have this overall gray, uh, anorthristic look to them, you know, with uh, very few, if any, uh, areas of red or yellow, just this really beautiful silvery gray color. Um, compared to the crawl key, they tend to be darker overall. The ground color is darker. Sometimes the crawl keys are kind of this light purplish gray, whereas these are kind of a more deep kind of uh, charcoal gray color. Another difference compared to the crawl key is that the shape of the saddles is a lot more regular. So they don't typically have the striping or aberrancy seen in the crawl key. You know, they just have this nice blocky dark saddle. And you know, in between they have this nice, you know, ashy charcoal gray ground color. And then another difference is that in general, they're more robust and thicker than the crawl key, more muscular. So, you know, the crawl key tend to squeeze quite a bit. They hold on to like roots and, you know, mangrove swamp in their natural habitat. And these uh, cocker key kind of do the same thing but they're actually quite a bit thicker and more muscular. And you can see he's really holding on there. You know, when I pick one of these guys up compared to the Cocker Key, I just get more of a sense of this is a really muscular snake. And you can see he's pretty small, so he's, uh, you know, not gonna do any damage. But if this was like a full size, you know, red tail, like eight feet, nine feet, this would be a really, really powerful animal. So it's a really cool animal because it really gives you that full, you know, so full-size boa constrictor experience in a much more manageable package. Um, so personality-wise, of course, these guys like to hold on, as you can see. But, you know, they're enjoyable to handle. You know, they got a good hand feel, nice to take out and hold. And, you know, I think that they definitely do have this subtle behavioral difference compared to the uh, crawl key, as well as, you know, the looks are different. So I'm, I'm glad I have them in my collection. This is my female Cocker K boa. Uh, so she's the same age as the male, also produced by Chris Wolf. And you can see they're very similar looking. They have very similar color and pattern. You know, as most of the uh, Cocker Key boas I've seen pretty much look like this. They don't have the variability that the Crawl Key has. This particular animal sometimes looks a little bit more brownish, whereas the male is a little more gray, but it's a really subtle difference. And you know, like her, uh, the male, she's really holding on there. They really show this impressive musculature. So uh, one of the reasons I like these 
Kibau is, is the fascinating evolution. Uh, you know, they got to the small island and they evolved this smaller size. And if you're interested in the biology of island boas, I would recommend the work, the papers of the herpetologist, Dr. Scott Boback. And you can access them online in some of the herpetology journals. But he's done uh, quite a few papers and studies on the biology of these small uh, key boas, including Qual Key, Cock Key, and Hog Island as well. So I'd recommend you check those out. Um, He's got one paper where he compares the mainland Belize boas with the Qual Key and the Cocker Key. So, you know, really cool biology going on there. So these animals are pretty easy to keep in captivity. They're not really that picky. Like the Qual Key, I would suggest you do not want to overfeed them and babies should be fed no more than about once every two weeks. And then as they get bigger, you can space out the feeding to every three weeks for sub-adults and about every four weeks for the adults. They also like eating birds. You know, in the wild, they subsist on a lot of birds in their diet. They'll typically eat the seasonal migrating birds that come through for a few months of the year. And then the rest of the year, they don't really have a whole lot of food. So you definitely want to supplement them with chicks and, you know, small quail in addition to the rodents. Um, I'm trying to breed them right now. I haven't uh, tried to breed these guys yet since this is my, the first year that my pair has reached breeding size, so we'll have to see what happens. But I would anticipate that uh, the babies are probably going to be similar to, to the Qual Key, uh, which generally don't present that many issues. Sometimes there are some issues with feeding. They don't want to start feeding on, uh, you know, pinky mice or, you know, fuzzy mice. So you have to give them, um, you may have to assist feed them or try to feed them lizards or something like that. But we'll just have to see. Um, but, you know, hopefully we'll have some of these beautiful cocker key boas born sometime in the summer of 2022. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed looking at these cocker key boas. As always, shoot me any questions you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.